Shannon Zwanziger was a healthy 17-year-old high school senior growing up in the southern Minnesota town of Owatonna. She had just beautiful eyes. Her parents, Gwen yeah, and Terry, say she loves skateboarding and playing video games, and she wanted to become an artist one day. She was young, oh, what, just ninth grade or something when she did that. Was, one day, like, three years ago, Shannon came home from school complaining she felt sick. And she said, I just feel horrible. I've got a sore throat. After four days, Terry took her to the emergency room. The doctor said Shannon had influenza, or the flu. And he said, you just have to um, ride it out, you know, go home and... Let it run its course. Yeah, let it run its course, that's what he told me. We're sitting in the uh, emergency room down there waiting to be seen. Her mom called, so I told her, oh, I got to, you know, took a picture of her. And I said, I'm taking care of her. And that's the last one we have. Back home a day and a half later, Gwen was with Shannon when she lost consciousness. I knocked on the wall and yelled for Terry to wake up. And, um, and then I laid her down on the floor right here. And Terry came down and called 911. Paramedics flew Shannon to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, about 40 miles away, but it was too late. The flu had destroyed her organs. We had every reason to believe that she was going to come back yeah, to us. Yeah. I mean, I had never heard that the flu would kill somebody like her. Shannon was one of 148 children in the U.S. killed that season by the flu. The number of children who die ranges widely, from 37 in 2011 to a high of 288 during the swine flu outbreak in 2009. The flu and complications from it kill another 12 to 56,000 Americans every year, mostly those 65 and older. And between 9 and 60 million Americans get the flu every year, costing $10 billion in doctor visits, hospitalizations, and medication. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends that everyone older than six months get the annual flu shot. Shannon Zwanziger chose not to in 2014, but the vaccine was only 19 percent effective that year, so it might not have mattered anyway. And that's the big problem with flu vaccines, says Dr. Anthony Fauci, head of the Infectious Disease Division of the National Institutes of Health. This right here is an influenza virus. The challenge is there are many strains of the virus and they mutate often. Every year you have to reevaluate whether the vaccine that you made for the prior year is actually now matched to the virus that you predict will be circulating in the coming year. That's totally unique. You don't have to worry about that with polio or with mumps or with measles or anything like that. Every spring, the CDC and the World Health Organization look at the flu strains circulating in the southern hemisphere to predict which strains might hit the north the next winter. The most common process of manufacturing vaccines, growing them in eggs, has been used for decades and takes about six months. That's a long time, and that's one of the reasons why it's crying out for us to do something a little bit different. Because once you start it, you hit the gong and you say, go, we're gonna start making a vaccine, it's very difficult to stop in midstream and say, oops, I think we got it wrong. Because the many strains can change so quickly, the flu vaccine is only around 20 to 60% effective. This compared to the once-in-a-lifetime polio vaccine, which is 90 to 100 percent effective, or the measles vaccine, which is 93 to 97 percent effective. That's why dozens of teams at the NIH in Maryland, across the country, and around the world are trying to develop a so-called universal flu vaccine, one that would protect against many strains and could last a decade or more. Microbiologist Peter Palacy is leading the research at Mount Sinai's Icon School of Medicine in New York. Many vaccines are long-lasting, such as measles, mumps, rubella. They're given once and then they are, we are protected for life, and we hope that we have something similar now for influenza viruses. As Palazzi explains, the outside of the flu virus is covered in proteins that look kind of like a lollipop. The top is called the head, and the bottom, the stalk. The head is the part of the virus that the body's immune system tries to fight off and builds an immune response to. It's also the part that changes constantly. The problem is that two years later from today, when I 
get infected again, the virus has changed so that my immune response is not effective anymore. Palazzi has figured out a way to make a flu virus with a head that the human immune system just ignores. So instead, it fights off the stock, the part that doesn't change much. So we want to redirect the immune system to make a protective immune response against the portions of the virus and the areas of the virus which are not changing. Palazzi's vaccine is now in the first phase of testing in humans, supported by funding from the Gates Foundation and the pharmaceutical company GlaxoSmithKline, one of the main producers of the annual flu shot. Anthony Fauci's research team at the National Institutes of Health has two vaccines, one already in human trials, while a team at Oxford University in England is testing another. The hope is someone will get there within a decade. When people ask me, and I get asked this all the time, what keeps you up at night regarding an infectious disease outbreak? Clearly, very high up there in that short list is another pandemic influenza. That also worries Michael Osterholm, an epidemiologist and head of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota. Seasonal flu is the one we deal with all the time, but pandemic is the flu that, frankly, is the one that scares the hell out of us. A pandemic flu is a strain that usually jumps from an animal, often a pig or a bird, to a human. A new strain for which humans have no prior immunity. Osterholm says the risk of a pandemic may be increasing because meat consumption is growing worldwide and more people are in contact with poultry and pigs. When pandemic flu hits, it's one where everyone is vulnerable, everyone's susceptible. The worst flu pandemic in 1918 killed an estimated 50 million people worldwide. Compared to other diseases, the flu is easily transmitted by just a cough or sneeze. Osterholm warns when, not if, a flu pandemic hits again, the toll could be much worse. Today, we see millions of people going around the world every day on airplanes. And with that, they can spread the virus very quickly and unbeknownst to them that they might be infected, spread it very quickly. Osterholm is optimistic about a universal flu vaccine, but he estimates the U.S. government is spending only around $35 million a year to find one, compared to around a billion dollars to find a vaccine for HIV, which causes AIDS. I wouldn't cut that, but it shows the world's lack of understanding of just how critical this flu issue is. Osterholm also says completing the human trials and getting the vaccine to market will cost about a billion dollars. And he's skeptical the pharmaceutical companies will take the financial risk. When we look at the vaccine area, this is not an area of high profits. The industry has no appetite for that right now unless there's assurances of support throughout the process and that there's a market at the end of it. There is no market at the end of the rainbow, so why even try to climb on the rainbow to begin with? A handful of major pharmaceutical companies are supporting universal flu vaccine research now, including GlaxoSmithKline, the third largest flu shot maker. So is Janssen, a division of Johnson & Johnson. And dozens of biotech firms are exploring universal vaccines, too. So do we, we Anthony Fauci believes if the government can help identify a promising vaccine, a pharmaceutical company will take it on. But he admits the government is not funding universal flu vaccine research at the levels it funds research on other diseases. There's a big disparity there. How do we address that? Well, it's always much more difficult to get funding for something that has not yet happened, even though you know sooner or later it will happen. And it's frustrating, particularly if you know deep down that, that we're probably making a mistake by not addressing something. So we're making a mistake right now, you're saying? Well, I think that we're not appreciating the opportunity to make a vaccine that could save a lot of money and prevent a lot of sickness and death. Fauci says he is developing a new strategic plan for the universal flu vaccine that will launch next year, and he vowed to devote more NIH dollars to the cause. This clearly is something whose time has come, and we've got to really push the envelope on that, and that's what we're going to do. And that's welcome news to Gwen and Terry Zwanziger. Today, Gwen calls herself a disease warrior, talking and writing about her daughter Shannon's death to increase awareness about the flu. She and Terry remind everyone they know to wash their hands, cover their coughs, and get the annual vaccine. We can't help them make a vaccine, but we can help make people aware. Everything is fine, and then four days later, we lost our daughter. Just your average person doing an average day and then you die. Over, over flu. Yeah. Yeah.